Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to EV train your Pokemon. No, not the Pokemon EV, EV as in effort values. And we're gonna be talking about three things to make your Pokemon super OP. First, we're gonna talk about what are the EVs. The second thing we're gonna talk about is how to reset your Pokemon's EVs if for some reason you've been battling the whole game and you wanna make it powerful, but it's all messed up. And the third thing we're gonna talk about are the two methods of training. So if you're pumped for this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe because you don't wanna miss out on content like this. We have a lot of other videos just like this on the channel, so make sure to go check those out. But without further ado, let's not waste your time and get right into this. EVs are known as base points. Pokemon get these EVs every time you capture or battle a Pokemon in an encounter. In fact, every single Pokemon you battle has a specific EV stat that it yields you when you complete that battle or catch it. For example, when you encounter Bidoof in the beginning of the game and battle it and then defeat it, that Bidoof is responsible for giving you one EV of HP. To put it in better perspective, four EVs are equal to one stat point when your Pokemon hits level 100. You can see that Pokemon have six stats, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Pokemon can all have a total of 510 EVs. Each specific stat, like attack, defense, speed, special defense, special attack, or HP, can only have a maximum of 252 total. An example of using all the EVs in a Pokemon would be this Garchomp. For example, this Garchomp can have 252 EVs in speed, 252 EVs in attack, and 6 EVs in HP, making a grand total of 510. Every single player has the freedom to put the EVs wherever they want. You don't have to necessarily put all 252 in one stat. You can distribute that amongst all the stats, but most optimum players will put a full max stat into what the Pokemon's biggest strengths are. Now, in this part of the video, you're going to learn how to reset EVs on a Pokemon. For example, let's just say you traveled really far with your starter throughout the game and you battled so many different Pokemon that yielded different EVs in so many different stats that your Pokemon is completely messed up. There's a solution for that. Six berries. The six berries that you're going to use are the Pomeg Berry, which lowers HP, the Kelpsey Berry, which lowers attack, the Qualot Berry, which lowers defense, the Hondu Berry, which lowers special attack, the Greppa Berry, which lowers special defense, and the Tomato Berry, which lowers speed. Yes, the Tomato Berry. When a Pokemon eats a berry, each one it consumes will lower EVs by 10 points. Let's say your Pokemon has 252 EVs in a certain stat, and you want to get rid of that. For example, speed. You would then give your Pokemon 26 tomato berries in order to completely reduce that EV back to zero. Berries can be found throughout the overworld and can be seen on your minimap. You also can plant one and yield two, which essentially means you can multiply the berries if you want to take out the time to do that. You can also purchase these berries from the battle park with BP. Each berry costs one battle point. So in order to lower a Pokemon stat all the way back to zero, if it's maxed out, it would cost you 26 battle points. Now let's talk about the two methods of EV training for your Pokemon. The first way of EV training your Pokemon is with vitamins. You will find vitamins scattered throughout your journey in the Sinnoh region, but you can actually purchase them with money at the Veilstone department store. So in order to get there, fly out to Veilstone, go up this pathway, enter into the store, go to the second floor, and talk to the lady in the middle. You then will be able to see all the vitamins in the game, which are protein, iron, calcium, zinc, carbos, and HP up. Now, each of these vitamins will increase your Pokemon's EV points by 10. So just like the berries, you would need 26 of one of the vitamins in order to max out a stat completely. In order to max out all of your EVs, you would have to purchase a total of 53 vitamins. The protein gives you 10 EVs of attack. The iron gives you 10 EVs of defense. The calcium gives you 10 EVs of special attack. The zinc gives you 10 EVs of special defense. The carbos gives you 10 EVs of speed. And the HP up, well, it's in the name, gives you 10 EVs of HP. The only problem with this method is that it could start to get really expensive as it'll cost you 9,800 for one vitamin. So if you were to use 53 vitamins, that would cost you 519,400 just for all that, which is pretty much half a mil. At the battle tower, you can also buy vitamins. It only costs you one battle point for one vitamin, which evenly adds up to 53 vitamins costing you 53 battle points to fully EV train a Pokemon. Let's talk about method two, the classic way of doing it. Since you can't turn off the EXP share in this game, this can be used to your advantage to train multiple Pokemon at once. 
since they get EVs when you catch a Pokemon or defeat a Pokemon. Every Pokemon that you battle or catch in the wild gives you their own EV point in that specific stat. For example, Bidoof gives one EV in HP, so you would have to battle Bidoof 252 times to max out that stat. That's a lot of Bidoofs, and that's going to take you a very, very long time. Hopefully, you'll only be EV training your Pokemon once you're in the post game. And at the battle tower, there'll be some really cool items that'll come in handy. This is where power items come in. Each power item will give you plus eight in a specific stat when you are training and battling Pokemon. Here's the list. You have the Power Bracer, which will give you plus 8 attack EV points. Power Belt, which will give you plus 8 defense EV points. The Power Lens, which will give you plus 8 special attack. The Power Band, which will give you plus 8 EVs. The Power Anklet, which will give you plus 8 EVs in a speed stat. And the Power Weight, which will give you plus 8 EVs in HP. Now let's go back to our Bidoof encounter because Bidoof just symbolizes Generation 4. I mentioned that when you battle Bidoof, you can get one EV point in HP. In this example, we're going to give the Pokemon a power item. In this case, it's going to be the power weight, which will increase the EVs gain by plus eight. So when you fight a Bidoof while wearing this power weight, you will then earn nine EVs in HP per battle with the Bidoof. That means you don't have to knock out a Pokemon 252 times, but now you just have to knock it out 28 times to maximize those EVs in that particular stat but it gets even better. If your Pokemon has something called Pokeris, by the way, I have a whole entire video on my channel talking about just the Pokeris and how to get it, and our community is also spreading it, so make sure to go check out that video to find out how to do it. But going back to Pokeris, if your Pokemon does have it, the EV stats you receive from battle are multiplied by two. So that means when you battle a Bidoof, plus the power weight, plus Pokerus, you get 18 EVs per battle with a Bidoof. That means you just need to have 14 Bidoof battles in order to max out that one stat. 14 battles with one Pokemon isn't going to take you too long when you have all those three things when EV training. So let's tell you locations where certain Pokemon are that'll give you specific EVs in the stats that you want. The first one is Route 201. You have Bidoof that spawn here that give you 1 HP, just like our example, and they have a 50% spawn rate here. Also on Route 201, we have Starlies, who can give 1 EV in speed per battle. They also have a 50% chance of showing up. If you're looking to get your special attack up, head to the old chateau in Eterna Forest. In there, you'll find a 100% spawn rate of Ghastlies that'll give you 1 EV in special attack each. If you head to Route 214 inside of the Maniac Tunnel, you will find Geodude and Hippopotas that will give you plus one defense each. They are literally the only two Pokemon that spawn there. So that is a great spot to get your one defense. Route 223, which is the water route to head to the Elite Four from Sunny Shore City, you'll find Tentacruels there. Now, the cool thing about finding a bunch of Tentacruels is that they drop two EVs in special defense and they have a 60% chance of spawning. On Route 210, in the foggy areas, when you start walking into the grass, you'll be able to find Pokemon such as Birabelle, Machoke, and Machop. Birabelle and Machoke both give you two EVs in attack, and any Machops that you encounter will be able to give you one EV in attack. So which method is exactly the best in the game? That's totally up to you. Method one will cost you resources, but will save you a lot of time. Method two, you can save a lot of resources, but you can lose some time when you're going out and trying to find the Pokemon in battle. In my opinion, if you have the Pokerus and the power items, while you're EV training, it should be a joke and that would be the best way of doing it. So congratulations, you guys now know how to EV train your Pokemon all the way up to become completely OP and destroy anything you find in the game. If this video was very helpful to you, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. My name is Philly Beats You, and I'm glad to help you out in your Pokemon journey in the Sinnoh region. Make sure to check out something else on the screen here. There's a lot of cool guides out here. Cl click on, Click on one of them. Peace.